Remember, a Hallmark card when you care enough to send the very best. Tonight, from Hollywood, the makers of Hallmark greeting cards bring you June Allison in Christopher Morley's Kitty Foyle on the Hallmark Playhouse. Each week, Hallmark will bring you Hollywood's greatest stars in outstanding stories chosen by one of the world's best-known authors, the distinguished novelist, Mr. James Hilton. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is James Hilton. Tonight on our Hallmark Playhouse, we present a dramatization of a novel by one of America's eminent writers, Christopher Morley. And the story of his we have chosen is probably his most popular, Kitty Foyle. There's a reason, as there usually is, for such popularity. Kitty Foyle is a truly American heroine, high-spirited, forthright, and abundantly sensitive to life as it unfolds for her. Moreover, like many good heroines of fiction, Kitty might well be the girl next door. Anyhow, this is a brave story with a universal appeal, and we are happy to have as our star tonight that very charming young Hollywood actress, June Allison. And now, Frank Goss, have you a word about Hallmark? There are Hallmark cards for every memorable occasion on your calendar, for birthdays, anniversaries, holidays. Yes, for every occasion that calls for remembrance, for a friendly greeting, a word of good cheer, an expression of sympathy. There is a Hallmark card that says just what you want to say, the way you want to say it. And that identifying Hallmark on the back, that says you cared enough to send the very best. Now, Hallmark Playhouse, presenting Christopher Morley's Kitty Foyle, starring June Ellison. <laughs> Papa always used to say that making decisions is the toughest thing we ever have to do. He said that when we move from one phase of life to another, we may look forward to where we're going, but we always have to look back a little, too, to what we left behind. Pop tried to protect me from having to make decisions. Like when I wanted to go away to college, I knew it wasn't possible. But Pop found a way to send me. It didn't last very long, though, because another thing was decided quite suddenly. Something Pop couldn't control. He had a heart attack. Kitty! Oh, I'm so glad to see you. Oh, I came as soon as I got your wire. How's Pop? How bad is it? Well, a heart attack is always bad enough without his making it worse. But you know your father. He won't listen to me. I'm just the housekeeper. Maybe you can do something with him. I'll go up and see him right away. Oh, he isn't upstairs. I have to help him down every morning. He insists on sitting in here. Pop! Oh, Pop! Hello, Kitty. Pop, what are you doing down here in the kitchen? Why aren't you upstairs in bed? Kitty, maybe sick people would all live longer if they sat in kitchens. You know, there's something alive about a kitchen. The way it smells and sounds and feels. At least it drowns out the smell of those darn flowers. I'm not ready for those yet. Why, they're beautiful. Where did they come from? They're from that Wynn Strafford. Do you remember him, Kitty? One of the young gentlemen I used to coach at the cricket club. Uh, you did some typing for him one summer. Yes, I remember him. So do I. And I have a pretty good idea who these flowers were meant for. Maybe after you've rested, Kitty, you'll come down and read to me for a while. Sure, Pop. Help me unpack, will you, Myrtle? Kitty, that Strafford fellow's been calling every day since your father took sick, but only to find out if you were here. You don't think he could be just kind enough and decent enough to care how Pop is? It ain't him, Kitty. He's nice enough. It's that family of his. They're snobs. Just because they have social position, they aren't necessarily snobs. 
You're being a little snobbish yourself. No, I ain't. I like most society folks. I used to work for some of them. But the Straffords ain't like the rest of them. That mother of his, she's sweet, but her back is made of iron. Oh, I don't see where she has anything to do with Wynne trying to be nice to Pop. Well, I'm just warning you. She's his mother. You better not get mixed up with him. I saw the stars in your eyes that summer you worked for him. Wynn Strafford is just somebody I know. I'll be spending my time looking for a job. That's why I said all I did, Kitty. Wynn Strafford is starting a new magazine. That's one of the reasons he's been calling. He wants you to work for him. Good morning, Wynn. Did the page proofs get here yet? Nine o'clock this morning. Well, don't look so efficient. I know I'm late. How do the pages look? Wynn, maybe it's just because it's a first issue, but it looks amateurish. Are you sure Perry knows what he's doing? Perry Berwin? Why, of course he knows. He was editor of the school paper at college. This isn't college. This is the big league. Suppose it fails. It won't fail. I'm determined to do something nobody ever told me to do. As a matter of fact, right now, I'm going to do something else nobody ever told me to do. Wynn. Wynn, you mustn't. I've been wanting to kiss you since the very first time I ever saw you. And I've been afraid you'd never get around to it. <laughs> Let's take the day off. Let's get out of here and take a drive into the country someplace. We can't. The magazine. There are deadlines that have to be met. Yeah, I suppose you're right. Well, let's do it someday. All right, Wynn. If you say so. Excuse me. Mr. Strafford's office... Miss Ball speaking. Yes, Myrtle. How's Pop? I'll be right home. Kitty. Honey, what's wrong? When? It's Pop. He's dead. <laughs> Kitty, I wish I could be more helpful. You have, Wynn. It's just, well, ever since I was a little girl, there was just Pop and me. These last few months without him, well, it's been kind of strange. I guess you never realized beforehand how much you love somebody. You don't know it until it's too late, and then, because it is too late, you try not to think about it. I know how I feel about you, Kitty. And that's something I won't be too late in knowing. When? How much do you love me? Darling, someone else said it better than I. How do I love thee? Let me count the ways. I love thee to the depth and breadth and height my soul can reach. When feeling out of sight for the ends of being... And ideal grace. I love thee to the level of every day's most quiet need. By sun and candlelight. I love thee freely as men strive for right. I love thee purely as they turn from praise. I love thee with a passion put to use in my old griefs. And with my childhood's faith. I love thee with a love I seem to lose with my lost saints. I love thee with a breath, smiles, tears of all my life. And if God choose, I shall but love thee better after death. Oh, that's beautiful, darling. No more than your beautiful kitty. You're not saying much. Trouble? Not really. It's just being in love. Being in love makes a woman feel quiet and a man feel talkative. Kitty, I've never been able to talk to anyone the way I can talk to you. When? You troubled. It's the magazine. I'm afraid we're going to have to close shop. After only four issues? It's no use. You knew it right from the start. It was amateurish, just as you said. Poor Wynn. Oh, well, don't worry. I'll find a job someplace for you. That wasn't what I was thinking of. I can get a job in New York. New York? A friend of mine is working for Delphine, the cosmetic woman. 
She has a place for me. Kitty, you, you wouldn't leave me. I don't want to leave you in. Not ever. Oh, darling. Oh, Kitty, Kitty, is it really you? I don't mean, is it you or somebody else? I mean, is it the most you of you? I guess it is, Wynn. If there's anything more of me, I... I never found it. Kitty, will you marry me? Oh, Wynn, don't you know? Don't you know? My mother wants to meet you. I promised to bring you home this evening for dinner. I'd rather not. Well, Kitty, you seem... I'd rather not. Well, Kitty, you seem frightened. No, I, I was just thinking of something, that's all. Will there be other guests? No, darling, only mother and my godfather, Uncle Ken. You'll love them, Kitty. doesn't seem to me that I know many foils. Are you related to the James foils from Baltimore by chance? Not by any chance. Uh, perhaps the Saltonstall foils then from uh, Pride's Crossing. No, just the Thomas foils. The Thomas foils? I don't believe I know them, Wynn. Where do they In live? In the suburbs, Mother. Oh, Frankfurt. Uh, <clears throat> uh, let us take our coffee into the library, Wynn, and uh, give your mother and Miss Foyle a chance to visit us. Well, my dear, I would like to have you as our house guest for a while so you can become acquainted with Wynne's other friends. I know most of them. They were always around the magazine office. They're very nice. Oh, that dreadful magazine. But Wynne would insist. He's forever experimenting. I'm glad it's finished. Wynne worked very hard, Mrs. Trafford. Oh, Wynne is quite industrious. I'm sure his Uncle Ken will find something else for him. But we're sorry about you losing your position. Please, don't be. I'll make out, all right? Sure you will, my dear. You modern girls are so courageous. You two should be fine friends by now. But I think I'm entitled to a little of Kitty's time. Let's go out on the terrace. Excuse us? Oh, oh, certainly. Dear. Oh, Wynne, I hope they like me. Of course they do, Kitty. They love you. They approve completely. Uncle Ken says you're just exactly the girl for me and the girl the family needs. Oh, Wynne. He wants to arrange the whole thing. Send you back to finish college and then maybe send you abroad for a year. And meanwhile, I'll extend my own education and then, darling, we'll be ready. No, Wynne. But Kitty... You... Can't you see what they're doing? They want to do me over, Wynne. They want to improve me because they don't think I'm good enough for you or for them. They want to cut me to a pattern. But they'll never accept me as a person. Oh, I want to be something better than I am, but I can make my own improvements on Kitty Foyle. No, I can't marry you, Wynn. moment, James Hilton will return to present the second act of Kitty Foyle. But say, what are you smiling at, June Allison? This verse, Mr. Goss. Jo thought that love was silly, and she didn't understand why any girl would ever want to hold, or rather have a boy hold her hand. But later on, Jo changed her mind, and with good reason, too, because Jo fell in love herself, as most young ladies do. Why, you're reading the verse from one of the Hallmark Little Women dolls. Isn't that Joe, whose part you played in the movie? Yes. Hallmark made Little Women dolls of each of us four girls who played in MGM's new picture, Little Women. Elizabeth Taylor, Janet Lee, Margaret O'Brien, and myself. It was fun playing Joe because she was the one I always loved best. As millions of children love her today. That's why Hallmark Little Women dolls make such wonderful gifts. And they're as easy to mail as greeting cards. I know, Mr. Goss. I've sent them to some young friends. Children are so thrilled with the real feather plumes in their hats and their beautiful costumes, just like the ones we wore in the movie. And each of us autographed the doll whose part she played. There's a verse with each doll, too. Children like to read them aloud at a party. A friend of mine had the prettiest birthday party table with Hallmark Little Women dolls as favors. Later, I'll tell your listeners how you can get these lovely dolls. But let's go back now to James Hilton in the second act of Christopher Morley's Kitty Foyle, starring June Allison. Yeah. 
After the break with Wynne, Kitty Foy left Philadelphia and went to New York. In trying to forget about Wynne, she devoted all her energy to her work at Delphine's Cosmetic Company. These new perfume bottles are fine, but that label... I'll get Bill to do a new design. Yes, Miss Foyle? Leave a message for Bill Williams. I want to see him as soon as he gets back from lunch. Speaking of lunch, how about it, Kitty? Thanks, but Delphine has a problem on the new powder. It cakes, and we can't put it on the market that way. Oh. We're having some sandwiches sent up to her office. Yes? That man is here again. That insurance salesman. Oh, thank you. Have him wait. Don't let him get away. Might as well ensure your sanity while you have the chance. I don't know how to handle these things, Molly. I suppose he'll keep coming around until I see him. If he's a man, that's the way it usually works out. Okay, if I go ahead and eat now? Sure. And on your way out, send in the super salesman. Right. <laughs> you can go in. I'll be with you in a moment. Sit down. I'll wait and wait and wait. When? I'm selling insurance to keep people from losing track of old friends. You just leave your name and address with me and I'll always know where to find you. Oh, when? why did you come? Why? I've been looking for you for two years, Kitty. Every cosmetic house in New York, and that's all I could remember about your job. I'm practically a commuter from Philadelphia. Well, if I said I wasn't glad to see you... I'd be lying. Oh, Kitty, Kitty, darling. Oh, when? I've discovered a wonderful place across the street, a little restaurant called Giano's. Let me take you to lunch. I can't. I just can't. Dinner, then. Yes. Yes. Kitty, the sandwiches are here. The powder still will not stay soft and... Oh! Delphine. This is a man who dropped in to sell me more insurance. <laughs> Another week, another paycheck. You meeting your insurance salesman again? Mm hmm. Dinner at Giano's, as usual. Why don't you buy the place? It might come out cheaper that way. What's that newspaper? A Philadelphia paper. What happens in Philadelphia that could interest you? Oh, society items. Once in a while, there's something about Wynn. <laughs> I kid him about it. Did he make the headlines this issue? Well, let me look. Usually in this column. See anything? Yes. Here. Mr. and Mrs. Roland H. Gladwin announced the engagement of their daughter, Veronica, to Mr. Wynne Strafford. Oh, kid. No, no, I'm all right. What are you going to say to him? I said all I had to say a long time ago. I'm going away, Molly. Won't he try to find you? I don't know. I'm letting my insurance expire. How about the new store Delphine is opening in Bermuda? You could go down and get it started and then come back. That sounds good, Molly. Thanks. Mind if I borrow that magazine you were reading? No. Help yourself. Your first sea voyage? Yes. Mine too. Business or pleasure? Business. Mine is both. Oh. First time I ever had enough money to go. That's the pleasure part of it. But they build a, a new hospital down there that I want to see too. That's the business part. Oh, then you must be a doctor. Yeah. My name is Mark. I'll bet your name isn't Mark. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> It's Kitty. Well, uh, there's a dance in the main ballroom tonight. Uh, I'm not a good dancer, but uh, if I don't keep practicing what I know, I'll be terrible. Would you help me? <laughs> I might. Good. You can help me in Bermuda, too. All they do there is rumba, and all I know is waltz. Can you waltz to a rumba? <laughs> <laughs> You've made
made this a wonderful vacation for me, Kitty. I hate to go back. Will I see you in New York? Don't ask me to promise anything, Mark. There are a lot of things I want to say to you, Kitty. But I don't say them because you don't want to listen. Let's go outside. Sure. Mark, you've been nice, very nice and sweet. That's all I can say to you. There's somebody back in New York? No. No, there's nobody in New York. Well, as the doctor says, where there's life, there's hope. It's trite, maybe, but I like it. I like hope. That's nice, Mark. Let's leave it this way, Kitty. I don't want to follow you around and get in your way. I'll be at the children's hospital. After you get home, if you ever want Thanks, to see Mark. me again. Thanks, Mark. If I do, I'll call. I promise. a splendid job in Dom Munich, Kitty. I am very happy. Well, thank you, Delphine. And thanks for the bonus. <laughs> that is not a bonus. That is a bribe. A bribe? Opening another new store? Yes, but a most expensive one. We have this space in the finest building in all the city. What city? Philadelphia. But you are from Philadelphia yourself, Kitty, are you not? That's right, Delphine. Then you will have many friends you can see there, would you not? Yes. Yes, I have somebody there. May I sit down, Kitty? When? Well, yes, of course. I was in the coffee shop and I looked out to the dining room and I saw you. I thought I was dreaming. I'm quite real. And beautiful, Kitty. More beautiful than ever. What are you doing in Philadelphia? Working. A new beauty salon. Oh, that's a shame. I was hoping that you came looking for me. Just as I went to New York looking for you. I'm afraid not, Wynne. I found everything I'm looking for. Everything, Kitty? Everything it's possible for me to have. I'm sorry I wasn't one of the things you wanted. Weren't you, Wynne? You turned me down that night you came to the house. Remember? Is that the way it worked out? I wasn't sure. That night always confused me a little. I turned down a chance to be tailor-made to your mother's specifications. I'm sorry about that, Kitty, but maybe we can... Wynne, cons- your wife came into the store yesterday. She's lovely. Yes. I've known Veronica since we were children. Kitty, will I see you again? I doubt it. I'm going back to New York soon. Goodbye, Kitty. Goodbye, Wynn. Take care of yourself. I can't do it for you anymore. <laughs> Yes. There's a man here to see you. He won't tell me who he is, but he asks if you've been eating an apple a day to keep him away. Oh, send him in. Mark. Kitty, it's good to see you. Let me look at you. What's been happening to you? Nothing of importance, Mark. You're the important one. I've been reading about your work with polio cases. You're becoming famous. I've been trying to forget about you, Kitty. Not that I want to. I knew that as soon as they told me you'd called at the hospital. I wanted to see you. You look so well and happy. I've been lucky. Working with kids has taught me that. What has happened to them could have happened to me. But it didn't. So I guess I owe them something. Yes, Mark. I guess we all owe something to the people who aren't as lucky as we are. 
How has your luck been, Kitty? Good, Mark. It's taken me a long time to realize it, but it's good. Because, Mark, I believe I can find my place in the world. A place with people like you. People who have enough courage to lick their problems and, and enough left over to help somebody else. Pop always said there's a place in the world for all of us, if we earn it. I believe I can find my place, Mark, with you. A place for us to be happy. James Hilton and June Ellison will return in just a moment. But now here's what I promised to tell you about Hallmark Little Women Dolls, the newest addition to the famous Hallmark Doll Collection. Little Women Dolls are in full-color costume with real feather plumes in their hats. They're eight inches high and stand up all by themselves. Each doll has a clever verse that tells all about her and is autographed by the star who played her part in the popular movie Little Women. Hallmark Little Women dolls are only 25 cents each, or it's a dollar for the entire set of four in a colorful permanent portfolio. Buy Hallmark Little Women dolls at the friendly store where you'll find Hallmark greeting cards. Some little friend will love you for them. Here again is James Hilton. That's what I call a charming and impressive performance, June Allison. May I add the praise of the Hallmark family to that of your millions of admirers. We are delighted you were with us this evening. Thank you, Mr. Hilton. And thanks to Whitfield Connor and Ken Peters, who played Wynne and Mark. You know, it's always gratifying to work in a fine story, like the new Little Women picture, which I made with Elizabeth Taylor, Margaret O'Brien, and Janet Lee. Never were there four more charming sisters. Well, thank you, Mr. Goss. One of the brightest spots of all was being sketched on the set by the Hallmark artist for their Little Women dolls. Of course, the biggest joy was actually seeing the dolls. They're so pretty and so much fun. And just imagine how much all our little friends will love receiving and collecting them. I'm sure everyone will want to see this wonderful American classic when Little Women plays at their theater. As for me, I'm going to tell all my friends not to miss it. Well, that's wonderful, Mr. Goss. Good night, and good night, Mr. Hilton. Good night, June Allison. You've made us very happy by your visits. Now, I'd like to tell our friends what's in store for them on the Hallmark Playhouse next week. We shall present our dramatization of one of the most successful novels of recent years, Betty Smith's famous story, A Tree Grows in Brooklyn. And the following week, we shall have Kathleen Norris's popular novel, Mother. And following that, James Thurber's great baseball story, You Could Look It Up. Our Hallmark Playhouse is every Thursday. Our director-producer is Dee Engelbach. Our music is composed and conducted by Lynn Murray. And our script tonight was adapted by Joel Murcott. Until next Thursday, then, this is James Hilton saying good night. Look for Hallmark cards that are sold only in stores that have been carefully selected to give you expert and friendly service. Remember Hallmark cards when you care enough to send the very best. This is Frank Goss saying good night to you all and inviting you next Thursday and every Thursday to tune in one half hour earlier and listen to the adventures of Casey, crime photographer, followed by the Hallmark Playhouse. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. This is KMBC, Kansas City, Missouri.